Hi my honeys, Erica here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little different because I went out of town for two weeks to help my dad build a faux fireplace in his house. That tutorial is coming soon. But I got a lot of packages when I was gone. You can probably see some of them here. It's not even half of them. I'll put up a picture of how many we actually have. It is excessive, but I figured I would open up all these packages today, stuff I ordered, PR boxes. I honestly don't know what all of this is, if I'm being honest with you, but we're gonna open them all up today and I'm gonna give you a little life update as I'm opening as well. Talk a little bit about my surgery that I had in December and just give you guys a general update on my life. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already and let's get into the video. I'm starting really easy and really small. I got these Weather X pressure filtering earplugs. Someone recommended these to me and I think I'm gonna give them a try because I get headaches when the weather gets really bad. I will report back and let you know if they're good or not and I'll link them in the description below if you wanna try them as well. But I guess you just stick them in your ears and wear them for a few hours like before a weather front pressure system is supposed to be coming in. So we're gonna give these a whirl. I got them on Amazon, obviously. So if you've been following me on Instagram, I had a hysterectomy back in December. I've been suffering from endometriosis for a really long time. I had one endometriosis excision surgery three or four years ago, and it was pretty successful. I was pretty pain-free for about three and a half years. And then last year, I just had extreme, extreme pain, and not even just during my cycle every month. It was all month long, stabbing pain. I knew I was gonna need to have a hysterectomy as the next step in my treatment. It was difficult for me to accept that, but we'll get into it here in a minute. This is actually something that I'm going to be talking about very soon. So I'm gonna keep this one under wraps for now. So let's get into it, hysterectomy. If you don't know what that is, they remove your uterus. They potentially can also remove your cervix, both ovaries and your fallopian tubes. I had my left ovary removed as well as my uterus and my fallopian tubes. Leaving one ovary allows me to not go into immediate menopause. I will still have all those hormones, so I won't feel symptoms. And I just don't have a cycle every month. That's that's essentially how it was explained to me. I think the hardest part for me to overcome was the fact that I would never be able to have my own children. I'm still on that journey, but yeah, it's been quite a process for me to accept that. I am very blessed to have two beautiful nieces and I'm just gonna hang on to that and just be the best auntie I can possibly be. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, I got some skincare in PR from Radical Skincare. This is their Advanced Peptide Antioxidant Serum and their Youth Infusion Serum. Lord knows, I'm gonna be 37 this year. I could use some youth. Their Extreme Repair Cream. This I probably will love because my skin gets so dry, especially in the winter. Thank you so much, Radical Skincare, for sending this to me. I'm super excited to try it out. And obviously, I'll give you guys the tea on my Instagram. You'll know if I'm using this and loving this. This is another box from A Floral. I know you can probably see some of my flowers here. They really do make the best florals. Oh, it's more of the peonies. Oh, you know what? I ordered these. <laughs> Me trying to remember. These went on sale, so I ordered a bunch of extra ones. The brand sent me these ones, but I actually ordered some with my own money because I want multiple peony arrangements in my home. So, yay, I'm happy that I got more of these. I know what this one is, and I'm very excited. This brand called Paris 64 asked if they could send me a handbag, and I was like, Absolutely, you can. And I've been really having a lot of fun with my Fashion Fridays over on my Instagram. So if you're not watching those, I definitely link a bunch of cute outfits. And it's just my way of sort of gaining back my sexy and my confidence after having a hysterectomy and all the health problems that I've gone through over the last few years. Oh my gosh, how pretty is this? So I just want to say before I get into this, I had surgery on December 5th. You know, to me, this was a life-changing, life-altering surgery. They called me on a Thursday after my pelvic ultrasound. They were like, hey, you're, you need this surgery. Like, you got a lot of endometriosis. Both of my ovaries were covered with cysts. I also had adenomyosis, which is when the 
Um, endometrial tissue actually grows into the pelvic wall. It's extremely painful. And I wasn't supposed to have this surgery until April of this year, but they called me and they're like, hey, we have a cancellation. This was Thursday, by the way. They, the following Tuesday, they had a cancellation and they were like, we need to get you in because you, everything looks a hot mess. And I'm like, well, I agree and I'm in dire pain. So I had to basically rearrange my entire life, figure out what I was gonna do for Christmas, all that stuff in four days. I had to go for um, testing and get all prepped with the anesthesia and all that in just four days. So that was a little disconcerting to be rushed so quickly. I knew I was going to have the surgery. I'd already had a consultation, but usually you meet with your doctor one more time before the actual surgery to go over any questions. I wasn't afforded that opportunity. So already going into the surgery on December 5th, I was very stressed. Okay, let's take a break from that and get into something really cute. <laughs> okay, so they said, hope you love your new province bucket brown bag, handmade in spade with the best leather and love. Can't wait to see you with your look on Instagram. Thank you so much, Paris 64. Like that is like the nicest thing. Oh my gosh, look at this pretty dust bag that it came in. Wow, I'm definitely keeping that. Oh my gosh, <gasps> look how cute this bag is. I love it. It has, a, it has a strap too, so I can just sort of carry it, you know, like this or with the strap. Look at the inside of this bag. How fun is this bag? It's definitely real leather, it smells like real leather. And it has just like a magnetized clasp at the top. This is so stinking cute. I cannot wait to style this with a few spring outfits. Thank you so much, Paris 64. I'm definitely going to have to check out their website and order some more bags. So cut to the morning of my surgery. I had to be at the hospital at five o'clock in the morning. My husband and I got up in that morning and we were like actual zombies on the way to the hospital and you have to do all this check-in stuff. And it was pretty intense for five o'clock in the morning, but I tried to just think about the fact that my surgeon had probably already been at the hospital for hours and was like awake and ready to go and perform surgery. I think this is an antique that I ordered. They bring you back to this little like prep area and my nerves just started going, going, going. They bring you back, they put the IV in you, they fill, you fill out like consent forms and all that good stuff. And my surgeon came back to talk to me and she made me feel way more at ease. I did ask a couple of last minute questions. So while I'm back there and they're prepping me for the surgery, my nerves are just really going and my, my surgeon really reassured me, answered a few of my questions. I was really worried about symptoms after the fact. Also, I do have a blood condition called von Willebrand's disease. Basically, my blood doesn't clot properly. So it's, it doesn't affect me on a daily basis, I would say, especially now that I don't have my monthly cycle. However, when I have a surgery or any major procedure, or if I get a major cut, I need to have something called DDAVP, which is a coagulant. So it helps clot your blood so that I don't bleed out during surgery. Isn't that fun? So we had to get all that arranged. Oh, awesome. Branch Basics hooked me up with some more of their products. This is their concentrate, which is their all purpose cleaner. And what's great about this, you can water it down and put it in like a bunch of different bottles. And then their hand soap, which is fragrance free. Your girl is fragrance free for the most part. So, and all natural. So I love that. Their oxygen boost for my whites and my laundry. I love this stuff. And I actually am close to running out. And I actually haven't tried these yet, but I will. The dishwasher tablets, plant and mineral based. So thank you Branch Basics for sending this. I'm definitely gonna check all of those out. So once we got everything squared away, I knew I'd be staying in the hospital probably at least three or four days because of my blood condition after my surgery they have to keep giving me the medication typically it's at least two days but in my case this time it ended up being four days so they brought my husband in at the last few minutes and then i said my goodbyes to him and it was it was emotional i think the scariest part of any surgery i feel like i'm gonna cry is when they start wheeling you back and you're just by yourself and your family's gone and it's just you and whoever's transporting you to your surgery and in my hospital where I went, they put you in this little like hallway in like this little inlet of the hallway in this little like sort of cubby area on a stretcher, obviously. And they leave you for a few minutes while they're prepping the room and you just are sitting there with your thoughts and it can be very intense. I just remember I kept saying to myself, you are strong, you can do this. This is going to be a positive thing for you. I just give, kept giving myself like a bunch of pep talks because it's just that 
it, I just never feel more alone or vulnerable when I'm in that position, in that hallway awaiting surgery, especially this time where I knew it was gonna change my entire life. I was literally having my last minute reconciliation with that in the hallway in the hospital and it was pretty intense. Fortunately, the anesthesiologist came over, saw that I was very upset and very nervous and gave me what he called a glass of wine. But um, it was drugs, whatever they use. In the IV, I, I honestly don't even know what it was, but it was definitely something that calmed me way down. And I was like, oh, this is a party. We, we are partying now. Then they brought me in and I don't remember anything after that. So. Oh, yay. I know what this is. Yay. I got this cute little mini bird bath. It is about the same size as my other one. I'm kind of collecting them lately. Don't judge me, but they're just so beautiful. And I loved the marble veining on this one. I think I got another antique from House of Woodville here on Instagram. Don't really recall actually like going under for the surgery at all. The first time I had surgery, I remember distinctly them lowering the gas mask over my face and telling me to take deep breaths in. I have no recollection of that this time, but I do remember when I woke up from surgery, I was in a ton, a ton of pain. And I don't say this to scare anyone at all, but I did not have a favorable experience in the hospital facility post-surgery. I was in a ton of pain when I woke up from the surgery, and I just remember just yelling, pain, pain, please help me, please help me, I'm in pain, please help me. And there were people there giving me more medication and what have you. It just didn't feel like it was enough. Whereas my first surgery that I had for endometriosis, now I didn't have a hysterectomy, but I did have an excision surgery laparoscopically, which is what I had done this time as well. But I just had organs removed this time, whereas last time I didn't. I still remember a lot of the recovery room and just how much pain that I was in. And I just didn't feel like my needs were being met pain-wise at that moment. I am pretty good with pain, but I will say this, this really tested me. And then the next thing I know, someone's wheeling me up to my room and I don't really even feel like my pain is under control yet. So you can imagine every lump and bump in the hallway, every little ridge we had to go over between doorways, out of the elevator. They did finally get me into my room and it took me a minute to come to, to sort of like get my bearings and kind of like wake up fully from anesthesia. Then I realized I had a roommate. I don't know how all hospitals work, but I can just say the last time I had endometriosis surgery, I had a private room after. It's such a sensitive surgery. You're recovering in areas that are uncomfortable and private. This is so personal. I was really emotional when I woke up from the surgery, as you can understand the loss of my fertility, the loss of my ability to carry my own child, whew, it, it took its toll. Almost instantly, I felt different, you know? I felt the weight of the surgery. Then to my surprise, her husband was staying with her the entire day. He didn't leave the room, he was using our bathroom. I don't know about you, but when all you're in is a hospital gown with no undergarments on, after a surgery where you're you know, uh, intimate areas of your body have been operated on, you cannot feel more vulnerable. You're in pain, you're tired, you're alone. You know, I told my husband because of our dog not to come up and visit me the first day after the surgery that I would wake up and just FaceTime him because I felt strongly that I had such good care last time I had that surgery there. I didn't think I needed anyone to be there. I have never felt more alone and low and vulnerable and like, just uncomfortable in my life. And then having the husband there, more than slightly violating. I mean, they're coming in, the doctors and nursing staff are asking me extremely personal questions about my bathroom habits, about my lady bits, and I'm having to share all this information with this person I don't know and her husband in the room, just separated by a curtain, okay? Also too, when you're on like these opioid type medications that they give you in the hospital, the narcotics, whatever, you feel very stifled and you feel very vulnerable as well because I was really out of it. There were times where I would wake up and maybe my hospital gown might be up too high on my leg or exposing something or I don't have the blanket on me to cover my chest area or anything like that. Now I had a hospital gown on, but you obviously don't have like a brassiere, nothing's on underneath that. So 
I just felt very, very, very uncomfortable. I'm gonna take a break from that for a second to show you something really pretty. I got this really cute stand. Can you see the little hands? Isn't that so cute? Now it's gloomy. Maybe because the subject matter I'm talking about, I don't know. But anyways, I'm recovering from surgery in the hospital for, how long was I there, Ian? Four days? Yeah, Four days-ish. On the third day, I had had it with having a roommate. Now the hospital does not have a policy for guests. It's unlimited. You can literally have guests any time of night all day long, which is great if you're someone who really needs someone to come visit. It is awful if you are a roommate of someone that needs someone there 24 seven. And I don't mean this in a rude way, but it was, I have to be honest, it was difficult having this woman's, uh, you know, significant other there. The entire time I did feel really uncomfortable. So the last night they finally left so I was like, oh my gosh, I finally get a room by myself. And they're like, the nurses come in and they're like, wait a minute. Nope, you're getting someone in in five minutes. So I had a, a whole five minutes without a roommate, okay? And it was bliss, but it was not long enough. <laughs> you're probably wondering what this is. I ordered my dog a tennis ball launcher. My husband shoots tennis balls with a hockey stick outside. I do as well, but I also really hurt my arms and my back doing that for long periods of time so I was like you know what there's got to be a better way and I went on Amazon and I found this and I was like yep that'll do it we've got a <laughs> tennis ball launcher so be looking for this on my Instagram soon because I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this so let's talk about my second roommate <laughs> well her husband beat her to the room so it was just me and her husband hanging out. I would estimate that he was in his late 60s, early 70s. And he decided that it would be a good idea to wait for his wife at the foot of my bed and ask me questions about my surgery. And let me tell ya, I had reached my limit. I had fully reached my limit on what I was able to tolerate. And that really put me over the edge. I did not feel comfortable at all. I hardly had a sheet on. I did not want to speak to anyone about the surgery that I had other than the nurses and the doctors. So yes, I kind of had a freak out. So at that point, I just get up out of my bed. Mind you, I'm hardly walking at this point. Like I can kind of hunch over like wobble. I get out of my bed. I'm like, you guys, I'm not trying to be difficult here, but you have to move me rooms for the night. Like I can't uh, I should mention too that she also, as soon as she got into the room, started blaring the television. And I just couldn't, it was midnight, I was exhausted, I was in pain, I just couldn't be in a situation where I had someone being careless about the person next to them. So I was like, you guys have to move your rooms, you have to move me to a private room, they're like, there aren't any available, I'm like in the entire hospital, and they're like, no. So they moved me to a room of someone who's already sleeping and mercifully that ended up working out for the evening and I ended up getting released from the hospital the next day. But I have to say the post-operative care and concern was very limited and it took me a really long time. Honestly, that experience really traumatized me and I really don't want to scare people away from getting the surgery because I'm sure in other hospital facilities, or maybe even the same hospital on a different day, it would not be the case. However, for me personally, I don't feel like anyone recovering from a hysterectomy should ever have to have a roommate while they're recovering in the hospital. Now, a lot of people are just sent home after that surgery because it can be done as an outpatient. I don't understand how that's done as an outpatient. As far as women's healthcare is concerned, sending a woman home after a hysterectomy like that and the amount of pain that I was in, I think is borderline inhumane, if I'm being honest. I can't really speak to what hospital policies are. The only thing I can say is me on a personal level, I had a difficult time with pain and recovering from that surgery and the emotions of it and having a roommate for the entire four days I was in the hospital was extremely difficult for me, extremely difficult. I feel at peace with it to the best degree I can, but to go through that after a life altering surgery was like, it tested me in every way possible. It really did. Oh, the laundress, New York. Oh, another PR package. Fabric conditioner softens and reduces static in fabrics, Ian. Mm. We're gonna have to try this out. 
This is so nice. They sent me so much stuff. Mesh washing bags, white detergent, delicate wash. Ian, we have like everything. Signature detergent. Um, oh, this is like a special one. Number 723 laundry detergent. I bet you that's like a special scented one. Signature detergent. Oh my gosh. That is so nice. Thank you to the laundress so much. And I'm guessing my manager who coordinated that because I did not know this was coming. So thank you guys. I cannot wait to try all this stuff out and use it. Thank you. So yes, that was obviously very dark to talk about. And honestly, I'm really proud of myself for not crying talking about it. How about it, Ian? Like... I couldn't talk about my experience in the hospital for like the longest time without like crying because it just like, it really, it really got me. It really got to me. Oh, I think I remember this. I think this is a bird bath bowl that came off its base. And then the source that they got it from put it inside this little stand and it allows the bird bath and it's beautiful marble to get a second life. So you can see that this was once a marble bird bath that was on a base, um, but it came off from the base. So now it fits inside this little stand like this, and it has a new life and a new purpose. And I love that. I'm wearing green at the same time as they got. <laughs> After I told my surgeon my full story about how I felt my care was in the hospital, I knew I was just gonna leave it there. And I'm grateful that I'm of sound mind that I can move on with my life in, and not think about it. Uh, speaking of of sound mind, I do wanna say that, like I said, I'm not trying to scare you out of having a hysterectomy because ultimately you guys will hear at the end of this video how I'm doing and I'm doing much better. And I'm very grateful for that. But I will say one of the major side effects after I had surgery was extreme emotional distress. I knew that I was gonna be feeling sad about my lack of ability to bear my own children. However, I had some pretty strong depressive episodes that first cycle after my surgery. I was literally like dark, dark depression, like saying things I shouldn't say that I don't actually feel, but I felt in the moment just felt really hopeless, extremely hopeless. And it wasn't until a month went by and I had my second cycle or what would be my cycle after my surgery, it was like a cloud lifted. And I was like, huh, I no longer feel super depressed and I'm not in a dark head space. Like that must've just been the hormones from my surgery. I did say, you know, it can take a little while for your hormones to sort of balance out after that surgery. So I would just say, be aware that if you have this type of surgery, that can happen. And if it does, you likely will be okay. But I would make sure that you're in touch with your surgeon or your GP, because maybe they can give you an antidepressant or something temporarily to help you. What is this? I don't remember what this is. Yeah, so getting through the emotions of the first month of the surgery was, pretty tricky. The other thing too is you're going to feel, even after the pain of the surgery, you're going to feel a little uncomfy in the lower region for a little while. I remember I, we went to Crocker Park, which is like an outdoor mall here, like not long after I had my surgery um, and I was home and recovering. I felt well enough to walk, but when we started walking, I can't explain it, but I felt like everyone could tell that I had a hysterectomy. I know that makes no sense whatsoever, but that is literally the best way I can describe it, where it just felt like I knew something happened and it felt obvious to all those around me. I just felt very uncomfortable. Sometimes pee is a little bit uncomfortable as well. Um, so just be aware that that is what, something that can happen. I have to show you up close, because look at how stunning this dish is. The veining and the blue, I just thought that was so unique. And for spring, how pretty is that? I already opened this before I left to go to Chicago, but I am i didn't unpackage everything, but I've been seeing a lot about unexpected red in design lately, how adding red to a room, like where it doesn't have a lot of red in it can make the room like feel really special and personal. 
and look designery. And I've been wanting to collect some more books for the bookshelves. So I got an entire set of these really, really cool books with gold gilt pages on the tops. So there'll be some unexpected red in the bookshelf. So I am three and a half months out-ish for my surgery. And I have to say, I'm doing a lot better overall. I'm having more up days with my health than I was having last year for sure. Is it perfect? No, I am still dealing with a stomach issue, I believe. I've sort of been diagnosed with IBS, which, not sort of, I have been, which probably came from my endometriosis because those can tend to go hand in hand. Unfortunately, I literally woke up one day last summer, the first week of June, with stomach problems and they never went away. Um, I'm doing significantly better. So I have to give it up for my hysterectomy for helping to improve my overall health to a degree and not having my cycle every month, you guys. It's been interesting. It has been like eye-opening how much that really holds you down in life, especially someone with endometriosis. Now that I'm not having to do that, I'm having so many more up days. You know, I was at my parents' house for two weeks and I was able to work every single day on the project with my dad, which is amazing. Right now I'm opening something I am so super excited for. For my friend Erin at Kismet House, she released a line of lighting with Maxim Lighting and she is probably one of my favorite, favorite designers on Instagram. We have similar taste and I really just enjoy everything that she does. Not only that, she's a really, really amazing person. I just think she's so funny and so relatable and so real. And she's been a really great friend to me over the last, you know, six months to a year or so. So I just really appreciate her and I'm really excited for her. So when her collection came out, she asked if she could put me on her PR list. However, I got too excited and I just ordered two of her lights anyway. So I said, take me off your PR list because I'm an actual booster and I just purchased the lighting myself because I just got too dang excited for you. Hold on, I'm gonna walk closer so you guys can see it. What? Look at how chic this sconce is. I ordered two of them. I actually currently have no idea where I'm going to put them. However, I'm thinking that I'm going to, when we renovate our dining room, put them in our dining room. So I'm going to save these for now and I'm actually going to keep this in its original box and keep the other one in its original box so that they, I can make sure that it stays nice. But Erin, I'm so freaking proud of you. I just think that's so incredibly amazing to release your own line with a brand. I have so much respect for you as a designer, as a colleague of you know another home creator on Instagram. And yeah, I'm just super excited for you. This is from the Hip Eagle. I'll try to link it if it's still available. Oh, and they gave me a cute little clip as a bonus. That's nice. It had a bunch of bows on it and it's so soft. I just thought it was really cute. Look at this cute velvet bow cardigan. I was like, I need this. Wait, I'm gonna try it on really quick. Look how cute this top is. So anyways, it goes to show that sometimes you have to go through something really difficult with your health to get to a better place. And I would say I am in zero regret about getting a hysterectomy. And there's still things I'm going to work through, you know, as time goes on and I realize I'm still not having children, you know, it may get harder and it may get easier. You know, I really don't know what the future holds as far as how I will deal with my emotions with that. T3 sent me some PR. They sent me their Wave Trio. It has three different size curling barrels in one wand, and I'm so super excited to try that. So thank you guys for sending that. I'm definitely going to be using this. I use their hair blow drying brush, so I'm really excited to try that. Okay, so I ordered this giant book off of eBay. Yay! but I don't need the dust cover for it because it's way prettier without it. And it's honestly torn up to shreds anyway, but it goes with my other giant books. If you can see them behind me there, I love these books. They're so massive. This is the Vincent Van Gogh one. And like, it has all about his life. There's black and white, there's color prints. You can even, if you wanted to, like take pages out of here and use it as prints around your house. 
This is a massive book and I love, 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 love it in my library with my Leonardo da Vinci and my Raphael book. Now I have like the little three piece set. By the way, we are gonna be finishing the kitchen here soon. We did get the patio doors in, they look great. And we got the rest of our flooring put in in the kitchen because the patio door finally went in. I'll actually have a reveal video on my YouTube channel here of the kitchen. It has been a long time coming. We had so many delays for various reasons. But we're in the home stretch. We'll be finishing that first, then the powder room, then I will be doing our dining room. I'm hoping to have the dining room done by Thanksgiving this year. And I have lofty goals <laughs> for that space. Like, I don't know why I do this to myself, but I'm like, oh, let me do something I've never done before and make it really complicated. I wanna do like a coffered ceiling, never done one of those before. I wanna do like wood paneled walls, never done that before. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this piece. Look at this tapestry. This is gonna go in our living room on the wall. I just thought it was so cool. And it has some of the blue tones and some of the other tones that I'm incorporating in our home. Oh my God, I cannot wait to hang this. This is so stunning. Oh, this is really pretty. I got this statue. This is a, um, San a Santini made in Italy. And I forget what her name is, but she, it's the lady where she's like, it seems like a bath scene. She's like washing. She's got a little jug in her hand. I thought this would be really cute in our powder room renovation to put on the sink. So I got her. Oh, and I got this bust as well, which I thought was super special. She looks like she's marble or alabaster, but she's very lightweight. I would imagine like cast resin maybe, but I thought she was really cool and I thought she would look cool on the bookshelf. So I got her as well. So this is from Sarah's Vintage on Instagram and I adore her. She's so cute. And if it is what I think it is, because I don't think I've ordered anything else from her recently, I'm going to be very excited for this. Good. Oh my heavens. Okay. I just need to bend. I'll just need to bend these nails back down a little bit. Oh wait. Can. Um, it is oil on, on wood board and it is honestly stunning. The flowers, the detail, the colors, super stunning. So I'm just going to have to um, put some new nails in there to hold this in place. But I mean, she's everything. You guys, they sent me two of these. So guess what? I'm going to do a giveaway in this video. So leave a comment down below. And I will pick one of you to win this. This is the T3 Waiver Trio. Hopefully that's okay. I'm hoping that's why they gave me an extra one. If not, then I'll just buy, buy one or something. But um, I'll give it one week from the date of posting to pick my winner. Do you guys ever sign up for subscriptions through Amazon? I always do this because I forget to order things all the time. And then sometimes I run out of stuff that I don't wanna wait 24 hours for. One of those things being my cat's treats, as well as these bones for my dog, these little twisty rawhide things. He's obsessed with them, actually. Oh, I was gonna ask you <laughs> Okay, Grammy, I guess I'll give you one. Do you want me to give you one? See, this is why I have to order them on a subscription because if we run out of these, this dog is very upset. Here you go. Cherry lime, strawberry lemon. You know what? I'm gonna open one now. It's not crazy cold, but let's give it a whirl. I've heard such good things. Wait, that's delicious. That's really good. I maybe should have opened this package first so I could have been sipping this the entire time. This is so nice. I got like a whole variety pack here. Root beer, Doc Pop, which does that mean it's Dr. Pepper? And Classicola. I know what this is, but I'm excited anyway. <laughs> um, this is from AG1. I took it shortly after I had my surgery and I did it for about 30, 30, almost 30 days, like two. I, I want to say I did a little less, maybe 27 days. I noticed that my overall health really improved when I was on this stuff and my recovery time was faster than I thought with my surgery. And I, I, I can't say I was doing anything other than taking AG1 every day. It's a foundational nutritional supplement and you basically mix it in water every day. And it's cute too. They give you the powder, right? And then you get the cute little, I can't get that out, but they give you a cute little cup too. And the powder, and then this really cute canister for your fridge. 
and I have to say I have had success with this this is not sponsored in this video but I do have a sponsorship running with them again on Instagram soon because I told them that I'm having success with it and I was like I would like to talk about this more so they said yes I know what this is and I'm super excited for this this I ordered they were running a sale at Fount I love their dust bags like how chic is this it's so soft too it says Fount on it beautiful I'm really excited to see this bag in person this is a color I don't have I have a lot of their peppercorn but I do not have wolf Wow, this is beautiful. I love this bag. I thought it'd be nice to have like a little bigger tote in case I needed to go somewhere and bring more things. <laughs> Not usually a bag person much. Me? Mm -hmm. I know, but I'm trying to get into more bags recently. I really like it. Because it's in a bag coming into uh, hockey sticks. I think this is so cute and you wear it over your shoulder like this. Like if I just need a larger tote, if I'm going somewhere I need to pack more things, I love it. It has the cute little feet on the bottom too, so it stands up. It has a cute little clasped, clasp to close it. Yeah, super pretty. Okay, you guys, I'm exhausted. That was um, quite an undertaking. Thank you if you've made it this far in the video. I'll be sharing a lot of this on my Instagram, styling things. Thank you for listening to my story about my hysterectomy. If you have any questions or want to reach out to me, if you're a woman and you're going through something similar or you have some questions and you're, you know, you're contemplating the procedure, I'm more than happy to talk to you. Um, send me a DM on Instagram. It was a really tough process to get where I'm at, but I'm here and I'm grateful and I'm happy and I hope to only see benefits going forward. So thanks for listening to my story. It really means a lot. I'm really proud of myself for not actually crying today. I think it took me all this time to heal a little bit so I could speak from it from the other side or speak about it from the other side. And I'm just really grateful that I am able to share my story and I wanted to do so. So thank you guys for joining me and make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye, say bye, Graham. <laughs>